Thank you for joining me for this new edition of uh, Genuine Diamonds in Arkansas on our YouTube channel. We have uh, interesting information. The Crater of Diamond State Park just released the statistics for 2020, their official diamond statistics that tell how many diamonds were found, the total carat weight of uh, diamonds found in that year, uh, how many of the diamonds found weighed over a carat, and how many of them were yellow, white, brown, and maybe other colors. It also tells how many visitors came to the park that year. We'll look at the statistics in a minute, but right now I'd like to look at some diamonds. Statistics can be kind of dry, but diamonds are beautiful. So the Crater Diamond State Park has genuine diamonds. Uh, there's something called Herkimer diamonds, they are not diamonds. So that's quartz crystal and I wish they wouldn't use the word diamond. If you've also heard of Arkansas diamonds or Hot Springs diamonds, those are quartz crystal and it's really a misnomer. They shouldn't use that word. These are genuine diamonds that are found here in the state of Arkansas. Uh, they come in white, yellow, and brown. And here's an example of each one. Uh, let me zoom in just a little bit on these photos so you can enjoy the pictures a little bit better. So this is a cover of my book, Genuine Diamonds Found in Arkansas. Yeah, I'm literally the guy who wrote the book on diamonds in Arkansas. And in the upper left we have a gorgeous yellow diamond that a visitor from Nowata, Oklahoma found in 2006. It weighed 4.21 carats. It was his first visit ever, Marvin Culver. He was a state trooper in Oklahoma his entire career and uh, saw, a, saw it on television one day about Crater of Diamonds and said well let's just go and they packed up and went and the next day he found that uh, within the first hour. Um, this is a 3.85 carat white that was found in 1931 during uh, commercial diamond recovery there at the south end of what is now Crater Diamond Search Field. This is an 8.61 carat brown that was found in 1978 called the Lamley Diamond because Betty Lamley found it. I was there the day she found it. She actually found it in a hole that my brother dug. He got discouraged digging for diamonds and left and the hole sat open for a couple of weeks. They came along, filled a little red wagon with ore out of the hole and gravel, took it over, flipped the wagon over, and there sat this lovely over eight and a half carat diamond on top of the pile. She never washed any gravel in her life and found an 861 brown. Uh, it's lovely. And this is a five and a half carat, 5.47 carat yellow that Bob Wheely of Ripon, Wisconsin found in the fall of 2006. And uh, it's absolutely gorgeous. He called it the Sunshine Diamond. And if you take it out in the sunlight, it will uh, radiate like light like you wouldn't believe. It's an absolutely gorgeous diamond. Uh, all four of these diamonds remain in their natural uncut form. There's nothing ugly there that needs to be cut off of these diamonds. Uh, here's the back of my book. This is an 8.82 carat white diamond. It's somewhat off-white. It was uh, found in the Pigpen area in 1981. It's called the Star of Shreveport. And uh, Carol Blankenship dug that up. Uh, this is a 3.40 diamond found in 1931, just like the one on the front cover of my book, The White. It was found in 1931 during commercial mining efforts. And both of those diamonds are in a collection of 10 diamonds from Arkansas. Uh, in Piggott, Arkansas at a museum called the Matilda Pfeiffer Museum and it's open to the public. You can go there and see their 10 diamonds. I think the shape on this is absolutely gorgeous. We'll look at it a little closer. This is a 204 yellow that I found in 2009. Not the best picture of it, but um, this is a lovely diamond uh, set uncut in a necklace and uh, it weighs almost two carats, 1.98, and it was found in 94. This, again, is this diamond, which 
seems to be have more color in that photo. Here it's more of a clear white, but the 882 Star Shreveport found in 1981. And this is the Sunshine Diamond, again, that was on the front cover, 5.47, that Bob Wheely of Ripon, Wisconsin, found in the West Drain. And this is a Carat 47 Black, the Black Beauty Diamond that James Archer found. My wife had this set in a ring. We bought it from James shortly after he found it. He came to our house, wanted to know if we wanted to buy it, and we said yes. And... Uh, had it set in, in a ring that she enjoyed wearing for years. And uh, this is a gorgeous 1.01 carat mackle. We'll talk about the mackle shape more in a little bit. It's a 1.01 uh, lo lovely, flawless gem. Mackles are naturally flat and triangular shape. And I put it right next to, this is my 204 yellow. See, that it's the same diamond, just a different photo. The color comes out better here. But I wanted to show you the comparison of the size of a mackle. This one is over twice as heavy as this one, but it doesn't look twice as big because this is thin and it spreads its weight out over a wider footprint. And uh, so anyway, this is fatter, chunkier, but uh, both beautiful, flawless gems. So let's just look at some diamonds from the crater. Before we talk about the statistics about how many have been found and what year and what color, let's see what they look like. I love the absolute gorgeous shape of this, found almost 10 years ago now. But see the natural contour lines in this? Oh, let me explain if you're not familiar. 44 point refers to the weight, not how many points are on the outside. It's not all pointed uh, points there are a hundred decimal points of weight per carat so this 44 point yellow is almost a half carat but these natural contour lines are the fingerprint that show this is a genuine diamond and uh, resorbed like an Arkansas diamond so that has the family appearance this is a little diamond that I found, a two-point yellow. Um, I found it at the crater. I just love the shape, although it's small. And this is the same diamond. See these contour lines I'm talking about? Let me zoom in just a little more so you can appreciate it. But, oh, just makes me drool. Look, see how these natural contour lines, see it goes like this. You could do a line drawing of that and I'll show you a line drawing in a minute. And anyway, that is a genuine diamond from the crater, but it's very tiny. 2.150th of one carat, but absolutely gorgeous, flawless. This is another picture of my two-point yellow. Uh, I have found 177 diamonds at the park. This is not my biggest, but it is pretty and I like to show it. This is not my largest, but very close. This is a 204 yellow, and this is showing the bottom. You saw a while ago on the back cover of my book, the 204 yellow standing up. It's kind of a football shape, but here's the end of the football, and you can see these natural contour lines in it. I think it's gorgeous. This is tweezers that's holding it. And uh, this diamond is 102 times larger than that two-point yellow that I found that I was showing you. Uh, this one, I can't tell you much about it, who found it or how much it weighs, but that has that gorgeous natural diamond shape. No, this has not been cut or polished. This is how they appear naturally when you find them at the park. Uh, this is kind of a line drawing showing you those natural contours. And, you know, I think you can see it in some of the diamonds, but anyway, this is a a line drawing showing you what I'm talking about on the contour lines. Here is the Dempsey Ducharme diamond that David Dempsey found this past uh, July 9th and I had a chance to interview him just within an hour after he registered it at the park. 2.93 gorgeous white. He had it cut to uh, a 1.18 carat cushion cut and I think it graded out very well. Send it to the GIA to be graded. We'll have more news on, on that diamond. Uh, here's an 87 point yellow that Jack Paradin found at the crater. He's found a lot of diamonds. I think 
90 at this point. I'd like to interview him for YouTube, watch for an upcoming interview, but he declined an interview with me until he finds that 100th diamond and then we'll have a chance to interview Jack. Um, this one was found by Dustin Galvin. It's a yellow, I can't tell you the size, but it has that lovely shape with the contour lines. This set of diamonds was all found by legendary diamond finder David Anderson. The largest diamond in this group is a 40 point yellow. Uh, this is, weighs 40 points, so four tenths of a carat. And although these are small, David has found many, many that are much larger. Uh, he has found over 500 diamonds at the crater and 10 of them weighed over a carat and his largest was a 6.19 carat white and he started out the first diamond he ever found was a carat and a half flawless white the April Fool diamond. Uh, this diamond was found by Kevin Taylor, Larry Taylor's brother and they're from I believe it's Fayetteville, West Virginia. Um, I think it's a 1.45 carat yellow but I think it's uh, absolutely gorgeous and uh, casts a nice shadow and all. This makes my mouth water. This is absolutely gorgeous. It's uh, called the Matilda Diamond and it <clears throat> it weighs uh, 3.40 carats and a yellow. It was found in 1931 and as I say it's on display at the Matilda Pfeiffer Museum in Pickett, Arkansas, which is the northeast corner of the state of Arkansas, the opposite end of the state from the Crater Diamond State Park, which is in the southwest corner. But there's quite a history. These used to be in a, a different museum. Uh, Dr. George F. Coons, a leading uh, gemologist in our nation uh, back, oh, a hundred years ago, um, selected this diamond from a group uh, along with others and uh, it, it went to a, a museum on the east coast and then eventually made it to the museum in Arkansas. So uh, historic diamonds. I've uh, got an ebook and uh, even a YouTube video about historic diamonds returning to Arkansas so you might take a look at that. This is uh, another one of their diamonds very interesting shape. Uh, you don't see that too often, but uh, it, it's pretty. This is another one of their diamonds. It's almost like a guitar pick in a way. This is thin and flat here and has a little chip on the end like somebody has been playing a guitar with it and then it has a little zipper along this side. So it's not flawless, but it's lovely and uh, it's a nice diamond and a good size too, well over a carat. Um, this pretty diamond, I'm sorry I can't remember them all, but it just has a lovely shape. I can't tell you the size or who found it or when, but it is a genuine crater diamond. These diamonds were all found at the crater. Um, this is the 8.61 carat Lamley, and I know these are all in the Haran collection, and I, I don't want to say whether, I think that's the Okie Dokie diamond, 4.21 carat yellow that Marvin Culver found. I could tell you which one that is and which one that is. I think that's Harold Lay's diamond there. And I'm just not sure on this. I should uh, should remember, but anyway, I don't. Uh, these two are in a museum back east and they're absolutely lovely. I can't tell you the size on them, but they're both very large. And uh, this one has some carbon spots is what a lot of people call it. I call it graphite spots because a diamond is 100% carbon. So how can you say something that has 100% carbon has spots of carbon in it? <laughs> it's actually spots of graphite, which is 100% carbon, but it didn't develop into diamond crystal. Um, but uh, it also this one also has a little flaw in it, but still these are excellent examples of white and yellow diamonds from the crater and they are quite large. I'm thinking three carats each. Uh, this one, again, I just love the size, the purity, the clarity, the shape, but can't tell you how big it is or who found it, but uh, that really makes your mouth water. That's a gorgeous diamond. Again, 
just another beautiful example of a genuine diamond found in Arkansas at their uh, public Crater of Diamonds State Park. This one, uh, 101 White, and you can see when it was found, but I don't know who found it, but it's a pretty one. And this is what I call a football shape yellow. And uh, it's only 11 points, you know, a little over a tenth of a carat, but uh, gorgeous. 16-point uh, yellow. You can see the date it was registered at the Crater Diamond State Park. and Almost a half carat yellow here. Beauty. And 69-point uh, yellow. Who wouldn't want one like that? So pure, clean, and well-shaped. Again, another football-shaped yellow diamond. One-tenth of a carat. Ten-point yellow. Almost a full carat yellow here. I am particularly fond of the yellows. As you can see, I've selected yellows for many of the photos. They tend to be more naturally beautiful and pure than the browns a lot of times have some flaws in them. Um, but not always. But the yellows seem to be more pure. And here's a lovely white, the carat 21. So diamonds all start out in an octahedral form. This is four, excuse me, two four-sided pyramids joined together base to base. But that's how they're, the shape, the natural crystalline structure and the shape they take on are formed in more than 100 miles deep in the diamond stability zone. Then after earthquake faulting and volcanic action brings them to the surface on the way up see they're molten hot and they're still hot and as they come up they begin to almost like an ice cube melting but it's called resorption and these are resorbing and finally when the crystal com is completely cooled it's no longer molten hot but when you have a cooled crystal then it has taken on this shape with the natural contour lines in it so this is why our crater diamonds look different than some African diamonds that are actually octahedron. Uh, they came to the surface slower. So the, the rate of speed, rate of ascent, and the rate of cooling depends on what shape your diamonds will be and um, the size of the diamonds. So this Resorb diamond is smaller than how it started out just like an ice cube would be if uh, you set it out in the sun for a while It's going to lose some weight uh, As it melts and this lost some weight in the resorption, but uh, we still have good sized diamonds here Here's one that's a white a lovely white. That's almost a half carat and Here's a pale yellow that is over one carat at 13 and there's a better picture of it shows the color better in this photo an 11 point yellow lovely shape to it real pretty I think uh, this couple I hear so many uh, stories people say oh well uh, I want to propose and I want to go to the crater and find a diamond and put it in a ring and uh, that'll be a more meaningful wedding ring well so many people want to do that and even if they do find a diamond, it's too small for a ring. Well, this couple came from Colorado, and they found the dim diamond, uh, diamond for the wedding ring. And uh, they had a picture taken next to a Colorado quarter, state quarter. But this diamond is absolutely a gorgeous yellow, and it's well over a carat. I believe a carat and a half. Here's other photos of it. I think it's so pretty. They met me in the parking lot and told me their story and so I had to get a, a bunch of photos of their diamond. It's so lovely. So they had it set uncut in a ring and he proposed, she accepted. This was a few years ago and they're now married. So, uh, And they live happily ever after. That's the other part of the story, right? So just a absolutely gorgeous diamond and that turned out well for them. Uh, this is a lovely brown uh, nice coffee color brown. The browns from the Crater of Diamonds can be either a, a tea or a champagne or a cognac or a coffee or a chocolate color. So uh, this one also has good color to it. And 
good shape and good purity inside. This one is very clean, a unique shape. Um, I think you could call that trapezoidal and uh, it's somewhat thin. Um, so it spreads its weight over a large area. I think it's a carat 44 brown, but I'm not certain. But um, absolutely lovely. This brown is 8.61 carats and was found in 1978 in my brother's hole. This is the Lamwin diamond, and I did an article for Rock and Gem magazine about in search of the Lamley uh, to find this diamond because it had been tucked away in a safety deposit box for decades until we brought it out and made it part of the Haran collection of exquisite diamonds from the crater. This is uh, a brown that's a little over a half carat, has a nice shape and color. This is a gorgeous, uniquely shaped uh, one-third carat white. And th here's an idea what you can do with uncut diamonds. This lovely, pure, football-shaped yellow is set uncut in a ring. I just love it. Um, here's a couple of beautiful diamonds, a white and a yellow, just for example, both about a quarter carat, found in 2017, near the end of the year, right before Christmas. These diamonds, this is the 882 white um, Star of Shreveport, found in 1981. This is Bob Wheelie's 5.47 carat Sunshine Diamond and James Archer's 1.47 carat Black Diamond, the Black Beauty Diamond. And uh, This diamond is important. Uh, it changed kind of the way the crater does things. We'll learn about that uh, when we look at the statistics. But remember the Black Beauty Diamond because diamonds are white, yellow, and brown. And black is an other color and uh, I kind of accidentally caused a lot of stir with that one. This is the Okie Dokie Diamond, the 8 point, excuse me, 4.21 carat yellow that uh, Marvin Culver, the uh, Oklahoma State Trooper, found in March of 2006 and I think it's gorgeous. I put it on a billboard so I could have a six foot tall photo of this diamond because it just makes your mouth drool. This is a beautiful diamond. I've seen it in person. It is a 17.86 carat yellow that's at the Smithsonian. Um, Shirley Strong's great great grandfather, Lee Wagner, found this diamond uh, in May of 1917 and it weighs almost 18 carats yellow at the Smithsonian Institute. You can go there and see it in our nation's museum, the National Museum there. This one, a little girl, I think her name was Tanya Clymer, uh, or something like that, from Oklahoma, like 14-year-old uh, girl, found a 3.85 carat yellow, and uh, that's a a lovely, lovely diamond there. Here's a handful of diamonds from the crater. This is one of their actually, you know, stock photos. I think you used to be able to get this as a postcard, so they had a lot of diamonds in a hand. This is a lovely yellow mackle that used to be on display in the museum, along with this lovely white diamond and this lovely brown. They had an example of all three colors, and one of them was a mackle, and now, I haven't seen them in their museum for years, and I, uh, I wonder what happened to them. Uh, here's how they were displayed in the museum in this photo. There's that yellow mackle in the center with the white and the brown and these other diamonds around the side. And this was the display photo taken from the museum. And they have diamonds on display there now, but none of these diamonds are in that display. And I wonder what happened to them and why they're not on display in the museum any longer. Uh, Ronnie Francis uh, got to hold all of uh, the Haran, these large Haran collection diamonds in his hand and had this photo taken. I could probably name most of them, but uh, this is the 6.23 carat bleeding heart diamond Joe Fedzora found at the park one November day, and uh, this is the 861 Lamley diamond. This is the 5.47 carat yellow um, 
Sunshine Diamond Bob Wheatley found, and this is a 4.21 carat yellow um, canary yellow that uh, Marvin Culver found in 2006. So this diamond and this diamond was found in 2006, and this was found in 1978. And I'm not certain on these, so I won't uh, I won't quote it. Again, here's how diamonds are formed. And I want to talk about the mackle shape now, because see, these end up as a tetrahexahedroid. Well, some diamonds end up as a mackle. And see this shape here? Well, sometimes, see, a mackle is a three-sided flat-shaped diamond. The side can shear off of this octahedron, and I think that's how some of our mackles are made. Some of them are twinned crystals and naturally form that way. But look how you start out with an octahedron, this side shears off, and then it resorbs some and becomes a nat naturally flat triangular diamond. So I think some of our mackles are formed that way. Some of them are just a twinned crystal that uh, just form like that. This is that gorgeous mackle, the 101 yellow that's on the back of my book, and my 204 yellow by comparison. And as I said earlier, this diamond I found is twice as big as this diamond. This diamond, a little old lady, was here from um, Dallas, Fort Worth, Texas area with her adult grandson. So I'm not sure how old she was, but she was walking around and found this on the surface at the crater and had it registered and went home and called me wanting to know the value she, she was interested in selling it and I offered made her an offer and she liked it and I said well if you could meet me tomorrow at my bank I'll I'll give you the money for it I thought that would be a safe location to trade cash for diamonds so neither one of us felt like we were going to you know meet up and get robbed <laughs> here's this mackle along with some other diamonds that are close to a mackle. This really isn't a real flat triangular, but it's a close. <laughs> this is the uh, 62 point white heart shaped diamond Worthington heart that I found. I have it set in a ring that I wear. It's set uncut. This is a close to a mackle that um, Claude Dill found. He found like 2,000 diamonds in his digging career at the crater. And only two of them were mackles, so this is fairly rare. And this is a lovely 13-point yellow mackle that James Archer found and we bought and is in our collection. So at the time, we owned all four of these diamonds and I took a picture of it. Uh, now We've since sold that diamond and this diamond, but I have these two still and plan on keeping them. Uh, here's the same four diamonds again, all the way from a 13-point yellow 62 white and a 101 yellow. Uh, so they're either mackles or close to mackles. Uh, this is a mackle. This is a mackle. The other two are close. This is kind of a heart-shaped diamond. If you saw it in a different picture, you'd see. There's that 101 yellow standing alone by itself. Absolutely gorgeous. I love the shape, purity, size, color, everything about it. I love it. Oh, this is my 62-point white naturally heart-shaped diamond you saw before so it's it's a modified mackle it's not a true mackle but it's really more of a heart shape and I have it set in a ring uncut that I enjoy wearing um, this is looks small but it's a oh yeah the 11 point brown uh, Dwayne Hall found that here it is uh, I worked with Dwayne Hall you might remember him from the prospectors TV show that was on the weather channel and was so popular he's the guy that climbs up to Mount White and looks for aquamarine and finds it and uh, anyway he came to the crater and dug with me for a week there's Dwayne Hall and this is our other friend George Enterman and uh, they were digging up on Beatty's Hill. I said, don't go up there. And he said, well, I want to try it. I had a different place for him in the East Drain. He went up there and that's where he found that 11 point brown. So he was happy. Uh, there's a picture of him. He registered that 11 point brown. Look at the centers we were getting on uh, and uh, found that right in among that. And he had it set in this ring uncut for his wife to wear. So Oh, this is the diamond the other guy, George Enterman, found. It was a 47-point 
white and uh, so we did well that week found two diamonds digging together this is absolutely gorgeous 67 point white in other words two third carat white mackle lovely shape here's a better picture of that same diamond um, just so rich and sharp and well proportioned just the symmetry here in the balance of that diamond absolute beauty i love the mackles and a white mackle that's pretty special this one looks mackle like but i think it's really too fat it's not flat enough for a true mackle uh, this one is uh not quite a mackle it's more of a shield shape diamond and here are two mackles that the same man found uh, kevin jones of shawnee oklahoma um, I can't remember the sizes, and this does have a little flaw along the sides, but anyway, two, two mackle diamonds he found in the East Drain when he was digging. Here's a, a brown mackle. Absolutely lovely. I'm impressed what you can find naturally. And Scott Crikes found this mackle. It's a 34-point white, and he's showing it here in among the heavies uh, when he found it uh, these other rocks are still wet he had just w washed and flipped it um, here's here is that diamond 34 points so a little over a third of a carat white mackle and he had it set uncut in this ring that he enjoys wearing very valuable diamond very special and pure this is an 11 point yellow diamond that i found it's not a mackle it's really more of a shield shape uh, I just love it. I found it like the day after I found my 204 yellow, so I wasn't, you know, so impressed with it. I had it one over two carats, so this was a little over a tenth of a carat, so why should I be excited about it? Well, um, I sold it and then later had a chance to buy it back and uh, have it in our collection. This is the last picture we'll look at before we go to the statistics, and this is the Haran collection of unique notable special valuable large diamonds from the crater here at 12 o'clock is the 8.61 carat lamley diamond found in 1973 this is the 4.21 carat golden canary yellow okie dokie found in uh, 2006 and uh, the 5.41 carat yellow sunshine diamond bob wheely found in, in October of 2006 and this is the 6.23 carat bleeding heart diamond that Joe Fazora found it's a yellow with a, a red ribbon running through it which is probably just an iron stain and this is a 6.72 carat they called it brown I would call it black I've held this one in my hand and I took it out in the sunlight and held it up and the shadow it cast in my hand was purple. So this is a very special, unique diamond. Uh, large Richard Cooper found this, and it's now in the Haran collection. Uh, I won't try to name all these. I think this is um, Harold Lay's fried chicken diamond. Uh, he named it that. And uh, 